you know, in Buddhism, there is concepts such as reincarnation, concepts such as tulku, all of that. But the institutionalized tulku system that we have in Tibetan, I don't think some, something like this exists originally in Buddhism. In the sutras and shastras, we never hear, we never read about, you know, Kashyapas or Mughalputras or Shariputras died and then, you know, a bunch of monks are trying to find their reincarnation. We, ha we, we, have, we don't know this kind of event. I mean, there are, okay, mentions of Ashwagosha, Chandagomi, who, reincarn who, who reincarnates. You understand? But the actual institution or the culture or the tradition of, you know, f trying to find a tulku and then enthroning them and all of that is a bit of a Tibetan thing. Started much later, I feel. And now, I personally think that to hold that culture, institutionalized tulku, that culture is dying. It's not going to work anymore. And even if it, and if it doesn't work, I think it's almost for the better, because this tulku is going to, if, if the Tibetans are not careful, this tulku system is going to ruin Buddhism. And at the end of the day, Buddhism is more important than the tulku system. Who cares about tulku? What happens to them? And you know, it's really not nice to hear every, you know, sort of pregnant woman are hoping, you know, you know like in the Tibetan or, you know, Himalayan society, every pregnant woman sort of, not every pregnant woman, but I'm just exaggerating here a little bit. But you know, like, oh, you know, maybe there is a tulku here. It's like a lottery, you understand? And Buddhism is so much, there's so much materialist, materialism going on. And so I don't think this Turku system is going to work.